I imagine that anybody starting out building shortwave radios using valves, this might be the sort of thing they'll build to start off with. This is in fact a two valve set, uh, but it started off life with one valve. Um, looking at the other side, you can see what we have. It's just this is a, a VR65, which uh, is I had a, a collection of these given to me, and that's what made me decide to build this just to see how well it worked. Typically, people used to wind their own coils in days gone by, and of course we've now gone backwards to that stage because it's so difficult to buy the Denko coils, Nosmore coils that used to be so commonplace in um, sets which you'd make yourself. Um, so I obviously had to wind this one and it's in an octal base. This is this valve, I wasn't even sure what it was. Um, it was a Mullard sort of EF something or other. Um, so I looked into it, looked at some others I have and I believe that is uh, an EF86. And obviously putting it in this place to give a little bit of extra amplification, it does actually work very well. Um, single gang tuning capacitor, it's slow motion drive. It's pretty much what what anybody would build and it's surprising just how well it works. Now to some people they might stick with this and perhaps do build another plug-in coil. I actually have two for this, this is one of them. Um, it works extremely well um, and you may well sit and have many hours of shortwave listening, enjoying listening to it and never build another one but um, I'm sure many people like me who always want to build something different. This is the final result of what I built and it is surprising that it actually has a box. I'm not much good at woodwork but I managed to piece this together to at least make it uh, presentable after a fashion. Um, so don't mind the antique knobs and things. The speaker is an old one out of a car. I think it's one of these ones that goes sort of in the doors or something but it, it's hanging around in the loft and I thought I'll put that in instead. Likewise I actually bit the bullet and managed to make a sliding scale here. As well. I um, also did a couple of features that I wanted. I wanted to be able to use the amplifier as an amplifier and a speaker or add an external speaker so I've added a couple of extra sockets on the back to see in a minute um, but that that really is just simply because that's what I wanted at the time. Now the problem with building any circuit these days um, here is a typical example this is the one that I actually used for for this one. Um, we'll show you this full size including my modifications right at the end of the video. There are so many circuits like this online uh, on the internet that some work some don't work some are not very good uh, some are very you know some are quite good some are quite good others have component values which are wrong etc etc so it, it's very difficult if you're thinking of actually making one what what are you going to make that's going to work well that's why i was surprised with this one because it's a, it's a circuit's a little bit unusual but I thought, I'm going to try this and see if it's any good. And I was so pleased with it, I thought, I'm going to build this into a box. And that's where it all started. Quite neat for me, actually, this. I don't always make the neatest uh, devices. Um, quite e easy to see what we have here as well. There's a VR91 EF50. I decided to use that as the RF amplifier because I had a box full of them. And I thought, I need to find a use for them. So, therefore, what I've done is built this using valves that I, have, I need homes for effectively. So that has to be an EF50 VR91. The next one in is another one of those SB65s, but <clears throat> I also had some 65As, which turn out to have four volts of filaments. Now I didn't have any circuits for uh, a four volt filament valve rather than 6.3, which the others are. So I used this uh, SB41, which is an SP65A, and that has a four volt filament. So I put some resistors in the heater line and it works fine. This is an EF36A which is the standard Mullard uh, device which in fact will work with an EF37, 39. They'll all work without component changes. Last but not least we have this um, 7C5 which is more unusual with a different base um, and that's a power output valve. So I happen to have two of those so I thought I oh, know I'll use one for this. And what you can't see over the back is there's a rectifier at the back which is um, a UY41. Now that's a bit of a it's a bit of a, an odd one to do because it has a peculiar uh, 30, 30 volt filament it needs um, and so I put a, a very small transformer in the back just to drive that. I just wanted to use the valve. So now there's, there's a, four, a four valve plus one rectifier lineup. You can see one of the coils in the front there are actually two here 
and there's a single ga gang tuning capacitor. Just a quick glance underneath, this is showing the, the wiring up underneath. Almost all of these uh, resistors and capacitors are new, and uh, very few um, second hand ones amongst them at all. Interesting enough, there's a particularly new resistor here. Why do I say that? Because <clears throat> this device was out because it went wrong. I was listening to it one day and I thought, volume's going down and down and down. And I was increasing the volume on the volume control until it reached a point where it wouldn't go up anymore. Now unusually, because this has a powerful amplifier, the volume's never turned up very high, but it, it was now and it was really quite quiet. Anyway, it turned out that this this little fella disgraced himself and um, gone open circuit. So I found that that was on the screen grid of the um, the EF36. So I changed it and hey presto, it's working again. The screen grid was down to about four volts and I thought that's funny, I'm sure it's supposed to be a lot higher than that. So um, we changed the the resistor and away it went again. These switches at the top are the ones I was explaining about with the external speaker and the two phono inputs to use the amplifier. You can select it on the switch if you just want to use the amplifier on its own. And of course that's the mains transformer. Just one mains fuse is there. Not very interesting hearing somebody tuning a radio, I know, but uh, for a run through this, this is 19 meter band in the middle of the day uh, in the UK. Just to see see what's available. I won't touch the reaction control at the moment. We'll see what what we we'll find. <laughs> meter band. Uh, it's around 40 meg. There's a few little things going on up there. That's the reaction control. If we go too far. Now we'll switch to the first wave band and let's have a quick listen to something on the uh, 41 meter band. A bit later in the day now. Ciao, 
Kanarische Inseln. And that's about it for the 41 meter band. So that's without the regeneration control on at all. So you have to have it so it's, it's starting to oscillate and it acts like a BFO. There we go, that is a typical reception on a single sideband signal. Okay, so lastly we switch over to the input uh, from the sockets on the back, found the sockets on the back, turn off the tuner and we'll just put on an MP3 through the wire at the back and uh, remind, I wonder if anybody remembers this radio station. Wonderful Big L, wonderful Radio London. You're listening to the happy sound of wonderful Radio London, bound to cheer you up if you stay tuned throughout the day. The time is 7 o'clock, let's weather cheer. Here's the latest weather words on wonderful Radio London. Wonderful Radio London. Wonderful Radio London. Well, I'm afraid this radio was never built when Radio London was on the air. Anyway, that gives you a good idea of the sort of performance you can expect from a set like this. Uh, well, following will be the circuit diagram. Leave it on for a few seconds so you can take a screen grab. And then after that, the coil winding. Remember that the coil winding is very simple with this uh, sort of thing. It's very easy to make a multi-band receiver because there's relatively easy coils to wind and there's you don't need two or three. Uh, it's just the one for each wave band. Thanks for watching.